All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are prepared. This is the watch list for May 6, 2019, and we have breaking news, and this is going to be the focus of tomorrow, next week, and the week after that, and seeing how this develops. It's going to give us some crazy opportunities. In the name of all of this that's going on, an hour after you see this video, 8 p.m. Pacific, we're going live for a Sunday stock review to start going over all these and even discuss this further, so... Get ready. I want to explain the news, some of my theories, and go over the plays as well as the strategy. So the live account, it's pinned in the comments. Make sure you guys drop a like, and then more importantly, it's still the watch list. you got to post your watch list below and what you're watching and now even your thoughts. What do you think? So put all of that there. I'll see you on stream in an hour. Let us get into this and not waste any time. First things first, this is the futures. Now, this data is delayed. Futures are down more than 500 points right now. That's going to be gapping down 2%. We have not seen anything like that in 2019 as far as a gap down. And even in the last month, a 200-point or a 2% drop at open, it is going to be very, very wild. But with this comes a lot of stuff. Now, what caused this? Donald Trump. Here is the thread. I guess it came um, about nine hours ago. You can see he says for 10 months, China has been paying tariffs to the USA of 25% on $50 billion of high tech and 10% on $200 billion of other goods. These payments are partially responsible for our great economic results. The 10% will go up to 25% on Friday. $325 billion of additional goods sent to the U.S. by China remain untaxed, but will, but will be shortly at a rate of 25%. The tariffs paid to the U.S. have had little impact on product costs, mostly borne by China. The trade deal with China continues, but slowly as they attempt to renegotiate negotiate no that's huge if you've been seeing there have been trade deals back and forth the market responded even earlier go back to january february march we've been documenting all of this so i want to discuss this and then i'm going to go over the keys for tomorrow the types of plays there's a lot of stuff and tomorrow is going to be very important for strategy however i don't want you getting distracted with that notice the the whole talk of these trade talks and this and that but i posted this five days ago if you go see this video so I posted this, three things will decide where the stock market's going in 2019. I posted this about five days ago. You could check here, it's on this channel. But I brought up what is happening here because this seems unexpected and it's related to both the China trade and the tariffs, but this isn't the trade deal. Now, I'm waiting for more confirmation. I do not have confirmation of this, but this is where I'm saying I have a hunch. You've seen me talk about it. I don't think this has been discussed, but this is related to Iran and the oil sanctions. This is weird considering we were getting all this positive trade talk and then Trump comes out of here. It's because... I think the countries, uh, and I talked about in that video, those six countries had the, their extensions expired for Iran and, and dealing with oil, but China hasn't been budging. So this is weird that we're coming after out of China all of a sudden, but I think it's clear that they're not going to be budging with their oil with Iran. So that is why he's implementing this. It doesn't make sense that they were working. And now China even said there's been so many follow-ups to this that one, Goldman, Goldman Sachs thinks that the probability of a no trade deal now, they still think this is just talk. But then China has already responded and said that they will not, they will end trade talks because they do not want to operate within threats. So this is going back and forth. But I really truly believe this is related to the Iran oil sanctions. So watch oil and watch how that plays out. But this is kind of surprising that Trump would do that. And, and again, I don't think it's a coincidence that both of those coincide. And right now, too, there is a lot of stuff going on in the world now. Uh, and, and I mean that from Turkey and Venezuela to Russia to even what's happening with Israel right now. But we're not going to focus on those for the stock market right now because this is going to take hold of tomorrow and let us know kind of how everything's operating. So that's the background. And I'm telling you that so you guys could could play off of this and understand how this is going to develop because people think it's one thing now but as the news starts to digest and reactions and everything these are to keep your eyes on places and even there is some stuff i'm going to talk about that trump brought up that leads to very very specific plays but i'm saying this now we're gonna this is at least for the next week or two it's gonna add volatility and this needs to now develop so this is going to be a very interesting time you guys make sure you're on there tomorrow morning 30 minutes before open if you're not going to be there get the stream alerts I, i'm not even going to remind you guys because if you miss out you miss out on this there, there's a lot going to be happening and a lot of expectations that need to be curved so let's get into what we need to talk about right off the bat 
volatility. You guys are seeing even the comments I've been getting, everything right away. Uh, people are excited. People are like, whoa, 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 what's going on? There's going to be volatility. And right now the VIX is really short and historical, meaning a lot of people with April and everything, they've been shorting the VIX. That's why we've been getting some weird moves and now earnings. But then again, that is the next thing to remember with the earnings that we still have earnings coming out the rest of this whole week, you guys. So you have to still be careful for all of those coming out because that could even have an effect on the market. But watch the VIX. But he, VIX. But here's the crazy part. It is going to happen very fast. And what I'm saying is that if you are playing any volatility, any plays, and I'm going to talk too about the difference. Are you guys supposed to play SPX, UVXY, whatever? Those come very uniquely in these situations. And that's what I described when I bought the, I, I'm in UVXYs for this week already. So those are going to be an interesting play to look at. But at the same time, at any moment, tomorrow, in the middle of the day, the next day, when you get up on your volatility, you have to be cautious to sell. Now, what is going to happen, though, you will sell and you will miss out on a lot of money. You will leave a lot of money at the table, but do not focus on that because when the market's doing this, take the green as you can and simply roll over to a cheaper strike. You buy an option, it goes up 100, 2, 3, 400%. Take your money, take the profit out and then roll over and put the same amount of money in. You put in 100, it turns to 500, sell it out, go buy another 100. But be careful to secure your profits. Volatility in IV is going to skyrocket tomorrow. And with the fear and depending on how things move, your job is to make sure you could get you know, the exposure and the money you want, but at the same time, do not get caught holding the bag because fear, remember, this is insurance. So there is just a big crash right now. You just saw a semi, a semi crash just occurred. So now if you want to insure for future semi crashes or if it's going to be a buildup, that insurance is going to be very expensive because people are fearful. So understand you want you know, as the insurance gets more and more and more expensive as risk goes up, you got to keep rolling and rolling, but do not expect to hold any volatility. Let me say that again. Do not expect to hold any volatility. You have to be smart with that. Next, the morning, there's going to be a period of bounce or even a change of opinion. And what I mean by that is we see it in the morning, tomorrow morning, it is either going to gap up or stay down, and there will be moves at both pre-market, but then as the market starts moving, that first 30 minutes, first 15, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, there's going to be a move, and it might seem like there's a change of opinion, or it might just level out. Tomorrow could still be nothing. It could still be where tomorrow is, you know, doesn't even bounce or anything. It's just the introduction of volatility, and then we see it pick up for the rest of the week. And what makes me say this, we have a lot of earnings still. There's still big earnings, even healthcare companies, pre, pre-market, aftermarket this week, still 100 companies a, uh, a day. Those are still going to have effects keeping the markets up or anticipation. So watching how those stocks move in the middle of this will be very, very interesting. And those can even be targets, but understand tomorrow... It doesn't have to happen where we see the big drop. Go watch the video we just made today on day swinging. So that's why you're going to have to find the balance between how do you hold the volatility and play it, but also swing it. That's why you could keep your initial investments in there. But if you're taking profit, take it, but don't control your expectations. This is bad. There is going to be an effect, but it doesn't have to go plummet a thousand points tomorrow after it's already dropped 2%. It could stay there. Let the rest of the world react. Anything else, it could bounce from there, stay same again, and then come down. That's how this stuff, the point I'm saying is volatility has now just been introduced. And that's what I, that, that is what volatility is now. There's risk. People get scared. There's a sell-off, maybe another sell-off, or it bounces. And then people are like, I don't know what's happening. That change of opinion, that's the definition of volatility. So I'm saying don't get caught up. The day swinging will take you very, very far in these environments. Don't get caught up on the day-to-day -day moves and make sure you have your plan. And if you don't want to get screwed on your plan, you play small with your plan so you're not married to it. It's very, very simple. But understand, control your expectations with the timeline you think this is going to play out. It's a car accident. Let something happen today doesn't mean it has to keep coming every day. Or even if it looks like nothing's happening today or tomorrow, you got to wait and let this stuff pick up. It's kind of like what we saw at the Fed meeting. But pay close attention to that in the morning. Now, here's the plays. I'm going to go over specific stocks, but I'm outlining this in words and all this. I, we need you guys tonight. You better be posting plays. You better post it on the watch list. Tomorrow morning, we need everybody there and on point. That's why I'm sharing this with you because there is going to be 
opportunities to take advantage of market inefficiencies a lot happens so the more that happens the more commotion the more volatility the more room for error which we could take advantage of so that's where you don't have room for error but we have to spot those so these are the plays you need to be looking for what i'm going to be looking for low iv slow moving cheap options and then the high volatility big movers or extrinsic gain so one the low iv stocks and i have a couple up here that's everything um uh, Tyson reports tomorrow too, and they had a big chicken recall. I just put that up there. Uh, but they're kind of a slow mover. But Intel, we've watched it specifically. You guys see a 50 cent, 20 cent move to some stocks is huge. Even some now ETFs. The ETFs are going to be harder to play, and we're going to discuss that. But some stocks like Intel, these slow mover value stocks, even though there's going to be panic and fear tomorrow, they've moved so slow and they barely move for the last, you know, five, 10 years. Like, look at in the last five years this thing has moved it hasn't even doubled in five years and i say that just because we're in a marketplace where stuff doubles in five years but it's a slow mover so even though there's a big drop tomorrow it's going to be much more muted because these slow low iv stocks have according to black shoals they have so many years and years of not moving the computers are very going to underestimate the effect of, of even slightly out of the money hitting because slightly out of the money is still a big move or even way out of the money but again you're taking if you do play those and again by going after this we're taking risk it's not like we're 100 percent right because if the market goes up you got to be careful but this is what i'm trying to say look to take advantage of of low iv stocks that traditionally don't move and have low iv the options will still be cheaper and slower movers but if you do pay premium again if you guys if tomorrow morning it's too expensive and we buy at the wrong time you're going to pay way too much and get screwed so just because these are the that's why i'm saying we have to snipe day by day, but this is the key. Low IV, slow movers, because even though they're going to make a move tomorrow, those are the ones you could get the options for cheap. And since they are such low expectations, you will get them cheap and near the money. And then the whole point is if there is a big drop or it does continue beyond this day, those are going to get really expensive because you'll get in the money. And then if they start moving in a very panicky way, they could start really dropping. The next set of plays is going to be the high volatility big movers. That's going to be your Amazon, Google's. Uh, Apple is kind, Apple's kind of a good low volatility one, but right in the middle there. But specifically Amazon, and we played that, and now we, we're going to lose a lot of money on those Amazons we bought. So everybody who bought Amazon calls, I'm sorry. That's why, you know, I said we scaled in. You had the risk on Monday or not. We're going to get crushed on those. Uh, there's no questions asked about that because tomorrow we already have the volatility. But the play with those, if it is a bigger, more expensive stock, you don't play the values, you could go out of the money and make sure they're high volatility and playing the extrinsic and the time value gain. Those also work, but you need extreme volatility or extreme fear to, bring, to really greatly jack up the extrinsic value and make insurance across the board all expensive. The next thing look for, the sectors affected foreign stocks like China, but now also India and the EU. There's going to be British companies in India is affected because now India and the EU are getting additional stuff, but India is also related to China, Iran, and all that. But then he announced something different, cotton. They said they're going to raise cotton tariffs. We haven't heard much about that. So the cotton ETF, the only one is BAL. If you guys have anything related to that, but also this is the power of the cult here. Start looking into what industries are going to get affected. Any things that are new on this next list versus not go back, go look up. He said he's advancing the, the $200 billion of goods from 10% to 25%. Go Google that list and figure out what those 200 goods are, where are they, they piled into, what are the biggest sectors that are going to get affected. But those are the first ones and find and aim stocks. That's why I'm saying there's there's multiple plays here. It's understanding you're going to be and we haven't even got to the, the, the puts or the, the UVXY, but it's going after arbitrary plays, random plays that have the certain qualities we want. But then also seeing the sectors because those could get double the push or even less of it. But next is financials and stuff getting double whammy by the Fed. So stuff that has negative fed stuff we saw how they dropped before and that's what's crazy part now too we're getting a little bit of fed a fed hawkishness in that weird meeting from powell and then now you're getting the china rug pull it's crazy but look at the industries that are also getting negatively affected by the fed and could double up on this and even some country etfs but now etfs will be expensive so be careful of that and then lastly, farming stocks. Uh, those have already got affected. The soybeans, everything else. Oh, no, we got one more after that. But a lot of people have even been saying, even with the weather we've been having and how it's been doing, but 
the the farming stocks, these tariffs, and the weather plus the tariffs, it, it's trouble. It's a lot of trouble, and it's not really looking good. So those are already getting murked. That's why I brought up Tyson. There's already a food recall, but watch those. Again, double-check it with the tariff list. But next is going to be oil stocks. I'm telling you guys, I believe it's saying, and this is where we're going to get a head start if I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's why we scale in. I'll only lose 20% of what I, what I initially thought, right? But if it's China related mixed with the sanctions we get, you know, we're also we're seeing India and cotton is really again, cotton and stuff is related to India and China with that. But if we start to see stuff kind of branch out beyond this trade war, because I, I, I just think it's fishy. I don't think all that talk. I, I think this goes beyond the trade war. And I think it is related to Iran and oil. We hate Iran. You know, that that's just how it is. So hashtag politics. Shout out my poly nerds, my poli sci nerds. But Oil stocks, I think these are going to be one step ahead because we're already seeing M&A, we're seeing the oxy and all that stuff. But now if there is, well, they could go, I don't know how they're going to get affected because oil could shoot up um, because this could lead to some supply issues that they kind of uh, closed off of last weekend, but you never know. So watch that though. Lastly, I got two times, uh, there it is. Then I think the last one, spy puts. Longer terms are the IV plays. So you guys are spy puts, you got to get the longer terms. Those are going to be in, uh, intrinsic value, uh, excuse me, extrinsic value plays. But the shorter terms, you want to play the, the, you know, you need to get in the money. Be careful of the shorter term spies. But now, when do you play the indexes? I literally, I just made that video a few days ago. I go for the UVXY and the SPY kind of when you know everything is going to drop. So these are those moments. However, the insurance gets expensive. And that's what I'm saying here. The SPY puts, I'm going to look at them to see if we could get some good ones. But mainly the more important thing that's going to happen with the spy puts the longer dated ones the ones with a decent amount of time and super far to the money you could play those and still make money but you need a continuation those are the ones super far to the money with time do not profit you if tomorrow's just one bad day they could go up 50 100 percent but the real crazy gains happen and that's what i'm saying you, you wait for the crush on these or you have to wait we need a continuation, but the minute the SPY bounces, UVXY and those long-term SPY puts are going to get killed. If we do get a second wave, those are the plays we play. So we play whatever is going to happen the next coming days, see what happens, and then the UVXYs are going to bounce, and the SPY puts, they're going to become cheaper, and then that second wave is going to hit of the downside. They're going to be dirt cheap, and that is the point now, and that's what I'll show you. We talked about the UVXY. I put that up on the last week's. I'm holding these, so I'm holding these for this week. I don't even know which ones. Like I'm going to be between 40 and 60, but look, these are all cheap. Tomorrow, they're going to be expensive. When I bought them, they were getting expensive. They went up 300%, and now they came down. So they're, they were, I was up 150% on these, and now they're down. These could be good plays, but also, again, don't underestimate what you guys are going to do with time. As you see, if I played UVXY last week for that weekly, this is the key to day swinging, my new invention but if I bought just that weekly for 50 bucks yet last week, I would have lost the money. I'm in this now. It could go crazy. So like I'm saying, we don't know how this is going to develop, but we know drama just got introduced to the market. You could take advantage of it. Make your dollars stretch that bitch. <laughs> Do not. So get some time on there. If you, you think you're a pro and you could handle the crazy speed of the weeklies, be my guest. But I, I don't think it's a coincidence that all of this stuff is happening and every single one of my videos has been telling you for the last four or five days get more time get more time get more time be smart understand what you're doing with these weekly so uh, god is good you're getting your warnings here be smart because you last thing you want is to buy a put be right on the play and you were wrong by one day that would have happened in this case but guess what i look like a genius now day swing it and be smart but watch these now and my brother even asked me because i told him i said uh, these were down. We went up on them and went down. That's because theta and time decay. So now the shorter term contracts are going to benefit you now because theta has already killed these. But be careful in the morning. But watch those. I, I am going to look at May 17, though, for the UVXYs. But we need to see the whole thing. So uh, uh, the, all the stocks go down. So this is my worry about spy puts in UVXY. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about with the spy puts. The key here. If SPY bounces or UVXY does, you're going to be screwed on them. They're going to be so expensive in the morning. But 
the point is we need everything to go down. So if we have earnings tomorrow and this week and we start to notice earnings companies are holding up, go after individual companies, ditch the SPY and UVXY because if there's any big you know, index names that could hold it up, it could, it could really mess up the balance and not give us that exposure. I like individual names, but this is a setting for us to take advantage of SPY and UVXY puts, but now, or UVXY calls SPY puts, but this is what I'm saying, like the longer terms, you could go like a month or two months out on the uh, SPY puts, and look, these ones out of the money are going to be really, really cheap, right, but they're going to shoot up th two, 300% in the morning tomorrow if if tomorrow drops really bad, yeah, they could go up another 100, 200%. But if you buy them at a high and the market stays the same or goes down, these go crazy. This is extreme insurance. These are going to drop. So these are the ones you go after on the second wave because you're going to watch these go from, I'm sure you could probably even see it. Nah, nah. These are going to go from 14. Oh, no. See, look, at they're at 20 cents. Yeah. So they already had when the, that's like my UVXYs. They jumped up to 24. One bad day goes by. They're back down 50%. Tomorrow, they're going to be up, but wait till it slows down. That's when we attack these. So watch out for that. But now let's get to the main plays of this. So right off the bat, I'm saying the value stocks, McDonald's. And so again, this was your guys' experiment. If you bought those McDonald's calls, what did you do over the weekend? If you held them, you got squashed. If you rolled over and did that strategy, congratulations. You took the money. You got the play. You were still in it, but you're not walking away with a loss. But watch these now. I don't buy puts on McDonald's, but this could be a time, but I want to look for whoever has more exposure. So Starbucks has Chinese exposure. They've been good. I'm going to look at them, but specifically, I'm going to like Caterpillar. These get expensive though in the morning, so you have to be careful, but they could have risk. Then I'm going to go to the Baba and JDs, but specifically, I would look at XLF, the financials. I am going to go to Amazon and see what happened because they could still have the Buffett effect. So watch that. And also, we need to watch tomorrow to see what goes there. As far as earnings, I, I'm going to watch that Tyson, but the next one I'm going to watch is Intel. That's going to be a good one, and I need you guys. Anything with super cheap options, I like XLF because it's all the banks, but if I don't like, if some of the banks are showing strength, I'm going to go individually after Bank of America and Wells Fargo, lower volatility stocks. They have those two, three cent options, and we could pretty much, those are going to be easier to find a pricing error and future expectation error. But Intel is one of those, because look at what I'm saying, you know, it, it, well, the puts are kind of expensive, but this is going to be a lower volatility. And, and I'm already actually, I'm on June. So look at how far out of the money you could go for 20 cents. That's with June. So imagine the May 17th, they're going to be pennies. Um, so this could be a good one. Uh, I'm going to really be looking at Intel. Uh, I am going to also now be looking at things that have already taken weakness. So Boeing is going to be another one of those, as well as Google. We already saw Google getting squashed from the earnings. It kind of came down, and that is the key now. We want to go after stocks that have already showing weakness. So if there's anything already down, that's what we want. I'm going to go after United Health. I'm going to go after the healthcare companies, but companies with weakness, we're going to go after there. But at the same time, they can't be too weak. You guys will notice an effect tomorrow, and we brought it up jokingly. Tomorrow, weed stocks might rip. Uh, a lot, Snapchat might rip. Shitty stocks will go up because they. So if it has too much weakness, it's not going to warrant an overreaction, and they might just stay there, or even go up a little bit, and people might by them might keep their. You know, again, people won't even rotate in or out of those in, in that type of event. So be careful of that. But watch the ones that have weakness and then stuff that has been up again. Now, even related to China, we've seen China moves. And now you guys even saw Qualcomm. But another one I'm going to like is XLNX. We saw Intel. What was the other one? There's another chip maker who did really bad. But watch those. And now, like I said, even transport stocks too, though. Uh, IYT, stuff like that. But there, there's going to be a lot of stuff. So those are my main plays. It's going to be around the value stocks and stuff like that. I want to see, we need to do more research tonight. So make sure you guys are on the stream here. Uh, it's going to happen in an hour, pin below. And we want to see how pre-market, but there's a lot at hand. I'm excited. Volatility is introduced. You guys better be careful. If you did not watch the videos for last week, um, listen, this is up to you. If you want all the tools, the tricks, I mean, this is it, but we're, things are going to be moving fast. A lot's going to happen. This is going to be an awesome time where people are going to fall in love with trading or you are going to hate it and never want to look at it again. I strongly encourage you, your, you to prepare yourself and do that with paper trading, practicing, because like I'm saying, I put this in the video today, there's going to be a window. Tomorrow, something is going to happen, but it, that cracked the window for the next few weeks. So don't get your FOMO. And that's what I meant to tell you guys. Understand how this is going to develop. And why do I say that? Because we've got 
you guys are lucky. I've got to live through a few of these. I've got to live through very different moments. But for you guys, you've already seen this before. Your first wave, right? But what happened? You get your little, that's what I'm telling you, you're bouncing your windows, you're bouncing your windows. So that's going to be timing. That's going to be following it. So again, if you're not following around, you don't want to pay attention to the lessons or you're going to miss out. You're not going to be on stream or you don't have the stream alerts. Trade at your own risk for this. There's a reason why investors don't like this. There's a reason why people say don't touch this and you can't make money. And it is very, very scary. You know, for someone like me, I'm a psycho. I love this type of stuff. I thrive in these environments, but if you don't know what you're doing, even now too, I'm, I'm, things are going to move fast. Even just watching me uh, again, so that's why watch the plays, so watch the videos, because if you don't have a, a deeper understanding to how I'm making my trades live, it could hold you back. So please, you guys, I'm not telling you not to trade or do anything like this. I'm just saying put in the work. Just go right now. This is not a moment you want to be uh, underprepared or still asking, you know, s stuff that you, you got to get it handled right now. If you are going to trade, if not awesome, this is the best, best learning lesson to paper trade and just watch from, and you'll get to see some exciting stuff. So I'm gonna leave it there. You guys drop a like, subscribe, post your watch list. I'll see you in the morning and I'll see you tonight. Let's go.